Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to import Excel to Dataverse using Dataflow. And I'll walk you through an example where I have a nice POC app that I had built, whose tables were in an Excel spreadsheet sitting in OneDrive, but now I'm ready to move it to production. So how do I move that Excel spreadsheet and its tables over to the tables in Dataverse? So that's what I'm gonna show you as an example, and I'll share some tips and tricks along the way. So that's the plan. Stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And here's the scenario I talked about. What I am here in my Power Apps Canvas app is this proof of concept app that I had built and it's data, which are these Excel spreadsheets there's actually an Excel spreadsheet that is sitting in my OneDrive, and there you go, that's the Excel spreadsheet. Now, I'm ready to move this over to Dataverse, and I'm gonna use Dataflows for that. So let's get started. What I'm gonna first do is go in my Power Apps, and I'll actually open up another tab, I'll go to Power Apps, and in there, I'm gonna now go to Dataflows. To do that, I go to Dataverse, and here's the little trick, because you go ahead and see Dataflows, I say, well, let me go to Dataflows, let me go and start the process there, but it's actually easier to do that from the table size, specifically the get data. So I'm gonna to go to tables, and in tables, I'm gonna click on data, and I'm gonna click on get data. Now in get data, you've got two options. So you might think that Daniel, I'm getting Excel, right? So I'm gonna go and click on this get data from Excel, but don't. Actually go and click on the one on the top, which is get data, and you click on the get data, and now you are presented with these amazing options, and voila, right there on the top left, you see Excel workbook. That's the easy way to do it. Now, once I'm over here, I need to go ahead and browse to my OneDrive, all right? So I'm gonna click on that, and once I browse to my OneDrive, I go ahead and get the option to now select the Excel spreadsheet location, because it's presenting my OneDrive right over here. So let me just try to remember out of memory. I say, okay, I was in Power Apps, and in Power Apps, yeah, that's the one. So I'm gonna select the, that spreadsheet, and then once you've selected it, you go ahead and click on the Select button, and you do nothing else, you basically go and click on next. And here you are presented with these Excel workbook. Now here's where it gets a little confusing because you will be thinking is that Daniel, I'm pretty sure my Excel spreadsheet just had two little sheets on it. And just to prove a point, I'll actually go to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna go and click on it. And once I click on it, you will see that that's all I have is two. Like there's no left button or right option. That's all I have, right? So I'm gonna go and close this so I don't get any errors. But the confusion sometimes happens is where <laughs> did these two extra come from? Devices two, manufacturers one. Well, that's kind of the how Excel works is at some point when I was working with that spreadsheet, um, I might have renamed something or I might have gone ahead and added or deleted something, something happened and Excel went ahead and remembered all of that somehow in its magical history process, but it's also displaying it over here. What I know from my viewing purposes is that I just have these two. It's called devices and manufacturers. So I'm just gonna select those two. And a great way to do it, you know, verify is that once I've selected it, it'll actually give me a quick preview of what it is. And so right now I know that, hey, these, this is my manufacturers. Those columns seem right. And then just to verify, I'll click on devices. And when I click on devices, it shows me what it is. And those columns look correct. So that's just a little tidbit that I'm showing over here is that don't get too confused with these unknown uh, worksheets that show up. Select the one that you are 100% sure of, and then you can also go and verify. So now I'm gonna click on next. When I click on next, this is where I'm gonna do a little bit of magic. Now, as I go ahead and see my spreadsheets, just to verify everything is good, manufacturers look great. I have an ID column, title, everything looks great. When I go to my devices, in my devices, as I'm just reviewing my data, I see that I have a manufacturer's ID column over here. And I was just thinking, like, man, it, was, it would be so convenient if I actually had the manufacturer names right here as well. But thanks to my Power Query technique over here, this, this, this little section where we are in Power Query provides you so much more flexibility. So I'm gonna show you a trick on how you can go ahead and now add your manufacturer column where you can actually get the manufacturer names. So to do that, we're gonna go on the top right where it says Merge Queries, and I'm gonna click on Merge Queries, and I'm gonna say Merge Queries. So I select that, and now it is able to give me the option to build my relationships. So what I've done on the top right is I've already got the manufacturer ID. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do a right merge from my manufacturers. 
and also helps me, you know, gives, it just makes it very user intuitive, but it says that, hey, don't, it says that this, the one that you've got on the top is the same thing as current, so don't go and accidentally select that. I know that the top one is devices, so I'm gonna go and select manufacturers. Now, I got a relationship over here. Manufacturer ID is the same thing as the manufacturer ID here, because that's how my spreadsheet was built, my Excel spreadsheet. I had the manufacturer ID on the top for devices, I have the manufacturing on the bottom for, for manufacturers, so I've got a really good relationships. And, you know, kind of the icing on the top of the cake is that the selection matches of 101 of 101 for the first table. It's giving me a nice green check, which means everything is good. Then I'm going to go and scroll down a little, and I'm just going to say join kind left outer. Leave it at that default for myself. And I'm going to go and click on out, okay. And then now it's gone ahead and built that relationship, and it drops a column all the way to the right. But that's all it says. It says table. So to do get me the exactly manufacturer names, I gotta go and click on this little icon on the top right. And once I click on it, it tells me that, hey, in your relationships, these are all the list type you can get, the data. And all I wanna do is I'm gonna select unlock, and I'm just gonna get the title. So I go and click on okay, went ahead and create it. I mean, it's kind of going and just showing me the data. Say, hey, that looks great. The column name is called manufacturers.title, so I'll go ahead and change that. Easy way, just double click on it, go to the right, and I'll just get the manufacturers. And now, just for my own personal convenience, I'm gonna click on it, stay clicked, and I'm gonna drag it over to the left. And as I drag over to the left, I'm gonna make sure I just drop it right after the manufacturer's ID. So it's moving, it's moving, I'm going ahead and moving it to the left. And very soon I'll get there, and I'm gonna make sure I drop it after the manufacturer. There it is, and drop it on the right. Neat thing is that in the query settings, it is actually keeping track of everything that I did. So that's also neat in case I need to revert back and do all this jazz, it all just gives me the functionality to even delete them and move up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scroll down and just do a quick test, because I know that, say, Inspiron is a model that is given by Dell. Yep, it showed up perfectly, Inspiron is over there. You know, and then I also know that the Elite books are HP. So this is just a way I can verify that my ID ones are actually correct. Just did a little quick you know, spot checking. But that's it. Now I go ahead and click on next. And once I click on next, it's just gonna give me another place to verify. And it's gonna be give me manufacturers. And when you're review, reviewing this, don't forget to go ahead and sec, you know, click on the one on the bottom as well, because that's just the way that you wanna verify. Now, I am importing it as a fresh table, all right? So I'm gonna leave it as load to new table. But here's something I'm gonna change. I know that I already have a manufacturer's ID. So instead of me selecting auto-generated, I'm gonna go ahead and actually say, nope, I'm gonna select manufacturer ID. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for devices as well. Devices on the top left, I'll leave it to load as a new table. I like the name, so I'm gonna keep the table name as is. But on the top right for the co column mapping, auto-generated, I'm gonna go ahead and select that to device ID. And everything is good. I just verify everything sticks, all settings are good. I don't need to change any of the column types because I'm kind of pretty sure this is what I need to do. And now I'm just gonna go and click on next. And when I click on next, it is going to just add, you know, give me another option is that you wanna refresh manually, refresh automatically, gives you all these things. Me, it is gonna be a one-time sync, so I'm just gonna leave it as refresh manually. And then what I personally do is on this public uh, publish button on the top bottom right, I just click on the drop down and I say public, publish now. And I select that and the process starts. Now this is where sometimes it gets a little bit concerning is because something's happening and I don't know what it is. But one way I can verify is that I actually go to data flows. And when I go to data flows, this is where I can go and see all my data flows. So it's actually showing a bunch of things that is going on. But here's a good for me when you verify. Like, hey, these, this is the one which actually started now and I'm the one who created it. So that's the one that's actually functioning. So I'll actually now go ahead and let this finish. Um, and again, if you remember, I had done a video, you know, a, a, not, not too long ago. Um, we will come back over here and we'll actually change the name because I want to make sure it makes sense to me. So what we're going to do is while this is running, I can quickly now go to my tables and I can just keep an eye on my tables that is getting generated. So quick way for me to realize if I've created a table is to search in the type column and I look for custom. So right now I have a custom column which I created. I had created this for some reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore that. Um, any other custom one? Yep, I created a test one a while back, but so far... I don't think that my um, new tables has been created. So I'll go back to data flows. And in my data flows, I guess I'll just have to wait over here. And so this is the one that's in process right now. It's publishing in process, which means that data flow, just the connection and all the query and everything, it's getting published. So once that gets published, 
what we need to wait for is, well, let the publishing finish, and then also let the refresh finish, because the refresh is what's gonna go ahead and get the data from that Excel spreadsheet and move it over into our Dataverse table. That's what we need to wait for. Cool, so it went ahead and now published it successfully. As you can see, it said it's successful. There's a green checkbox over there, and we've got a successful timestamp as well. This in progress is where it's going ahead and doing a refresh. The first refresh is where it actually now gets the data for us, and that's what's working on right now. So we'll just let that also finish, okay? Awesome, and that's also done. Now everything was successful. We went ahead and created the tables, we went ahead and get the tables, all of it looks successful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now select, select this ellipsis and I'm gonna do a rename. And in my rename, I'm gonna put a name that actually makes sense to me. Device app data flow. I'm just rename it just so I can keep it over here. Cool, it changed. Now, at this point, it is completely up to you. You've gone ahead and done the data flow. You've gone ahead and got the data. Whether you want to keep this data flow as is or you want to go and delete it, it's completely at your discretion. What I do is that I go and keep it over here for a few days because after I do the migration and the transition, you know, I just want to make sure that I still have this because there might be an option or there might be a situation where, you know, that Excel spreadsheet which is sitting in my OneDrive, the one which is right over here, somebody else might actually touch it and modify it and do something. In that scenario, I can actually go back over here to my data flows and I can go ahead and do a full run again, a refresh, and it'll get that delta data. And in fact, if you wanna see how all of that is done, I put a link to a video I did in the past of how we can go and get all that data as well. Watch that video if you want. But again, what I do is I'll just leave it over here for a few days, um, just in case I wanna move any delta data. Now, we go back to our tables, and in our tables, we should see all our data that's coming in. And I usually just glance over here either on the new column, the name column or on the type column, and I'm seeing it. I can see my manufacturers, which is showing up. This is new. And on the devices, I can also see this new table show up. So we are in good shape. So now let's work on the last piece of the puzzle, which is going ahead and replacing the data connections in our app. So I go back to my Power Apps, and in my Power Apps, I'm going to, you can do it either way you want. You can go ahead and delete these two, and you can go ahead and add the other ones, or in this scenario, I can actually go ahead and even add directly these ones. Now, what I'm gonna do, again, this is just my personal practice, is that I had this app open while those new tables came through, so I'll just go ahead and, if I had to save something, I'll save it, but I'm gonna intentionally go and close it. This is just something that I do because, um, because the tables were already created and that connection is already there in the Power Apps uh, Studio. So just to make sure that I've got a fresh connection, I'll come back in, I'll go back, and now I've closed the app, I'm gonna go back into the app and I'm gonna click on edit, and I'll go to my Canvas Studio. And now it's going ahead and loading, and we're getting there, and while I'm in, that's when I'll go ahead and delete the Excel spreadsheets, and I'll put in our Dataverse tables. So the app has loaded, now I'm gonna go and now replace the connections. Now, one of the things I like is that I've got these specific names, like manufacturers and devices, but it's, it's an Excel connection. So what I can do is now I can go and get the other connections from Dataverse tables, and even though they have the same names, the two names remain. Like it wouldn't be because I've got manufacturers in Excel, the other one automatically becomes manufacturers too. It doesn't happen that way, and I'll show you. So I'll go ahead and just expand all the tables, and I can actually search for, there's my manufacturers already here. In fact, both are here, so I'll just select devices, and the moment I get that in, you'll see the names remain as is. It's just that because how Dataverse behaves, it automatically added a plural, which is why there's two S's, so I'll have to update my formulas, but you get the idea. So I'll get the manufacturers one as well, and that's right here. And by the way, the, the plural, which is the additional S, you could go ahead and replace that right when we were creating the connection. Uh, it's just something I didn't think of, so, but, but you, you do have that flexibility. So I'll go ahead and I'll remove this, and obviously we have some errors, so let's fix these errors. The first one is the manufacturers, so I'll actually put in this one, and that will fix that piece. We'll, we'll get on the other errors, and we'll come back here. And I wanna go ahead and grab my gallery one. Gallery one, I've got uh, the S's. So let me just add the S's, and that takes care of that as well. Now, it is giving me a little bit of delegation warning over here, and that's because and, and what happened is the manufacturer's ID, one of them, either on this side or that side, we've got a text to uh, number problem. So let's go and see which column is that which is causing this problem. So I'll go my tables and in my tables um, Let's go and review our devices column. So that's the new table that's created. So in my devices 
it's the specific one we're looking for is the device ID. So in my device ID, that is a custom number, which is a text, but it's the manufacturer's one. Manufacturers in my devices table, the manufacturer's ID column is a whole number, which is perfect. That's what we want. So I'm guessing the, the delegation problem is coming from the manufacturer side. So if I click on the manufacturer side, let's see the manufacturer's ID. Ah, the manufacturer's ID has got a text, not a problem. We'll just go and tweak our formula. So what I'll do is the manufacturer ID, this manufacturer's ID is coming from devices. We knew that was a wholesale, um, I mean, that was a whole number. So here I'll just go and update that as I'll put in a little uh, a value prefix. And when I do that, delegation has gone away, that little exclamation went away and we've got all our information. Let's go and see what this error is showing up. This error, ah, oh, because it's the manufacturers, <laughs> you know, double S's. So I took care of that and there you go. Everything is good as new. I'm just double do a couple of check. You know, the filtering is working. Awesome. If I just randomly select something, I see the numbers are getting added up and I can go and click on that and it shows up over here. So the app successfully migrated over because, and, and all the formulas are now good because we went ahead and updated that thanks to us going ahead and replacing from Excel to the Dataverse tables, the app is now working. Wasn't that awesome? How we successfully went ahead and did the migration from Excel over to Dataverse. Just keep one thing in mind is that you make sure that everything is happening in the same environment. So when you're going, you're, wherever you're importing the tables, keep that in the same environment as where your app is. Otherwise, when you go to the app and you're trying to search for the Dataverse tables, you won't find them over there because the app and the Dataverse tables are in two separate environments. So that's a little important, you know, last minute uh, information that I need to share. But hopefully this was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Power Apps and Dataflows. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.